Welcome back to the Barber Kettle Series brought to you by Fogo Charcoal here on Chud's Barbecue, everybody. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today we're making some cheesy, scratch-made chopped cheese sandwiches on the Weber Kettle. Coming up! This is some meat! What I've got here is roughly equal parts of chuck, boneless short rib, and brisket, which is a pretty classic combination for burger grind. Because ground beef is step number one to making a great chopped cheese sandwich. And if you're unfamiliar with a chopped cheese, it's essentially all the elements of a cheeseburger prepared and served in the style of a Philly cheesesteak. And I apologize to all the New Yorkers for comparing it to a Philly cheesesteak. I know that's a touchy subject, but this is a classic sandwich that you're gonna find at a lot of New York City bodegas that has really been blowing up in popularity over the last few years. And for good reason, it is absolutely fantastic. And one of my go-to late night snacks. <laughs> Now, simply enough, through the grinder we go. I've got the small millimeter die on this meat grinder here, and we're just gonna pass it through once. Beautiful. Next up, we're gonna form these into some burgers. I'm going with six ounces today. Definitely not necessary to turn these into actual burgers, but you know, whenever I'm busting out the meat grinder to make ground beef, especially if I'm using all three cuts like this, I like to make a lot, because then I can form these into individual burgers that I can then pop into my fridge or vac seal in four packs and pop into the freezer for a quick and easy burger night. Beautiful. And obviously you don't have to grind your own meat and turn it into burger form. You know, you can easily grab some ground beef from the grocery store and just throw it down on the skillet. But this is how they do it in Harlem, so that's how we're gonna do it today. The bread of choice for the chopped cheese sandwich is a New York City style hero roll, which is basically a soft, squishy, white sub roll that's still got some good strength to it to hold up to all the cheese and grease and goo that we're gonna be putting on it later. And to make them is super simple. <sighs> Starting with a mixture of some milk and some water. That has been warmed up to about 110 degrees. Then we're gonna go in with our sugar. Oh yeah, get that all nice and dissolved. One whole egg. That all nice and beaten up. Our oil and our yeast. Give that one final mix and make sure this yeast is alive by letting it sit for about 10 minutes until it's nice and fluffy and puffy. Into our stand mixer, we're going in with some bread flour, some kosher salt, and some dough conditioner. Give that a light little mix. And then in we go with all this stuff. We're gonna let that need for a solid 10 to 12 minutes. Oh, looking beautiful. And what we're left with is a beautiful, nice, soft, supple ball. Shouldn't be too sticky or anything like that. Love it. Into a grease bowl this goes to double in size for the next hour or so. One hour later, our dough is looking beautiful. Eh, boop. Just gonna punch all the air out of it. And we're gonna divide this into four equal pieces. Once these have been stretched out into some nice little rectangles, we're gonna go ahead and roll these up into some nice, tight, little loaf-shaped logs. Make sure to pinch that bottom real nice, like that. Give it a nice little roll. And then on a baking sheet, we're gonna go down with a nice dusting of some cornmeal. And we're gonna lay our lovely little dough logs in a neat little row. And we're gonna let these rise for about another 45 minutes. Toppings on a chopped cheese sandwich are pretty unanimous across the board. You got ketchup, mayonnaise, shredded lettuce, sliced tomato, sauteed onions, American cheese, and sometimes hot sauce, depending on who you ask. So let's get all that together, shall we? Starting with ketchup. As much as I love making everything from scratch, I do not plan on making ketchup today. And I'm gonna go with some Whataburger spicy ketchup. That is my favorite ketchup. That's all the ketchup I keep in my house. And because hot sauce is somewhat debated, I figured spicy ketchup is the way to go. And while I don't plan on making my own ketchup, you know I'm making my own mayonnaise. Starting with one egg, about a tablespoon of some Dijon, similar amount of some white vinegar, some fresh lemon juice, big fat pinch of salt, and a cup of some neutral oil. And then we go with our immersion blender. And just like that, some beautiful homemade creamy mayonnaise. Once looking nice and fluffy, we're gonna go ahead and hit these with a bit of an egg wash. Oh yes, please. And finally, with the razor blade, we're gonna go and give them a nice quarter inch score all the way down. Oh, that is satisfying. Into a 425 degree oven these go for the next little bit until they are looking beautiful. Gotta say, folks, these are some lovely looking rolls. And as you can tell, as soon as they came out of the oven, I hit them with a nice coating of some butter to make sure they're nice and soft. And they're feeling real nice, looking nice and fluffy. Let's let these cool down.
according to Babish, who lives in New York City and frequents bodegas, he says that a lot of chopped cheese sandwiches are seasoned with adobo seasoning, which is kind of an all-purpose seasoning made of a lot of spices that you probably already have in your cabinet. Let's make some. Starting with some kosher salt and some black pepper, granulated garlic, granulated onion, some paprika, chili powder, turmeric, oregano, and some cumin. Give that a nice little mixy mix and our seasoning is ready. At long last, with everything finally assembled, I think it's time to fire up the pit. So I've got my cast iron insert on top of the slow and sear full of coals inside of my Weber kettle right now. It's the very same cast iron pan that I've been using as my drip tray slash airflow regulator for the last six months. And I think that's gonna work out great because at a bodega, you know, they're cooking these chopped cheeses on the same griddle that they're cooking bacon and eggs and all sorts of good stuff on. So seeing how this thing has been collecting brisket and pork and all sorts of good drippings over the last few months means it's gonna taste extra good. But because it is so hot, this chopped cheese is gonna come together real quick. So let's go ahead and make sure we've got everything else ready. Starting with these beautiful hero rolls. I mean, just look at that, folks. Come on, it's so light and fluffy. Just get this thing split open. Ooh, so soft, so fluffy. Gotta love that. But because this is such a messy sandwich, we're gonna go ahead and toast this off for a little more structural integrity. Hit this with a little bit of melted butter. And I'm gonna pop it into my oven, which is still hot. Beautiful. Next up, a nice healthy schmear of some mayonnaise on the bottom bun, as well as our ketchup on the top. Beautiful. Let's get these burgers cooked off. And now that our cast iron is nice and ripping hot, on we go. With our two beautiful fresh ground patties. Just gonna let those get nice and crusty for a couple of minutes, kind of like a smash burger. And while we wait, we'll go ahead and hit them with some of our seasoning. I'm just gonna go heavy on one side here. That smells lovely. It's also at this time we can go on with some of our onions. Just kind of surround the burgers as much or as little as you see fit. And after a few minutes, we're gonna go ahead and flip these over. Ooh, beautiful crust. And then we commence chopping. Getting all the burger and the onion mixed up together. Doesn't take long, folks. I gotta say, this is the first time I've ever used this cast iron for cooking, and it is awesome. And once everything is nicely browned up and those onions are nicely cooked down, we're gonna head towards the flat side of this thing and get this all lined up, which is conveniently the cool side of this griddle. And now we go on with our cheese, which is, of course, always American cheese. But I just so happen to have a couple of slices of some homemade sharp cheddar American left over from my Juicy Lucy video. So let's just let that melt for a minute. Ooh, looking good. And now the tricky part of getting this into the bun. Oh yeah, get that nice and close. And unfortunately, this is the biggest spatula I have. All right, let's just go for it. Confidence, right? <laughs> Woo, that's hot. Ow. This is a big sandwich, folks. Not gonna lie, that could have gone a lot worse. But now, simply enough, on with the rest of our toppings, including our lovely tomatoes, some of our shreddish. And last but not least, we have to wrap this up. That is a secret to any good sandwich in my book. So I've got some sandwich paper down here. And we're just gonna try and wrap this up. Oh yeah, just give it hell. And here it shall rest and steam until we're ready to dive in. And there it is, folks, in all its glory, the beautiful chopped cheese sandwich. Honestly, not that appetizing of a cross-section, but you know it's gonna taste great. I mean, what's not to like, folks? Freshly ground beef on some homemade hero rolls full of sautéed onions, American cheese, lettuce and tomato, ketchup and homemade mayonnaise. Huh, I gotta dive in. I gotta say, folks, I'm pretty excited about this one. I've made a lot of chopped cheeses in my life, but I never really put this much effort into it. And usually when I do stuff like this, it comes out tasting amazing. Look at that beautiful bun, nice and squishy. I'm loving that meat to bread ratio. Let's go ahead and take a bite, shall we? Oh. Uh... Mmm, that was phenomenal. I mean, I really don't think I need to do much convincing, folks. It's just a cheeseburger in a different format. Oh, my God. Mm, that was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Beautifully seasoned. That bun is perfect. Gotta say. You got plenty of that Maillard flavor from all that ground beef getting super crusty on the griddle. Oh. Mm. 
It's just so cheesy, so gooey in the best way possible. This is what late drunken nights or early hangover mornings are made of, folks. I tell you what, oh my God, that is so good. I get it. I get why this sandwich is becoming so popular. Damn, you know, sometimes I impress myself but that is fantastic. So trashy, yet so elevated at the same time, right? It's a big greasy sandwich, but with the homemade bun and the freshly ground beef and the lettuce and the tomato and that adobo seasoning, it really comes together to be quite a lovely bite. Not to mention, if you didn't make your own buns and grind your own beef, this thing comes together in like 30 seconds. It's so quick, so easy, and so good. Oh, oh God, it's amazing. Truly an amazing sandwich. And I must say, I'm pretty impressed with how clean this board still is, considering how much is going on here. You know that cheese really acts like a glue to hold it all together. That's why you don't want to go ahead and chop your cheese into it. Mm. Mm. When I was studying up for this video, I was watching a lot of videos and reading a lot of articles about the chopped cheese. And the New Yorkers are very adamant that this is a completely different thing than a Philly cheesesteak. And I gotta agree. Although the components are similar, you know, beef, processed cheese on a hoagie-esque roll, this is a completely different eating experience. And honestly, I think I like it better than a Philly cheesesteak. Don't tell anyone. Mm, so cheesy. And honestly, I'm much more likely to make this than a Philly cheesesteak anyway, because you know, Phillies are made with ribeyes, or at least a lot of the time they are. And I just can't justify doing that to a beautiful steak, but I've always got ground beef lying around. I've always got a bread of some sort lying around. So throwing this together is super easy and I highly recommend you give it a try. You know, it's good when I actually eat a lot of it. Mm -hmm. That bread is perfect. The way it's squished up like that. Love it. Uh, like I said, I've made this plenty of times before as a late night drunken snack, but usually it's just me in the kitchen grabbing some ground beef, throwing it on whatever bread I have with whatever cheese I can find. But to actually aim for the authentic version, this is leaps and bounds above any other chopped cheese I've ever made. It's just a damn good sandwich. Oh, <clears throat> but with this last bite, I think we all know what time it is. You know, this would be a good thing to bring to a party. Make a big, long sub, cut little chunkers like that. I'd be your friend. Um, now I know some of y'all are sitting there thinking, wow, that's just a cheeseburger in a different shape. Or, hey buddy, that's a cheeseburger sub. Or, wow, I think I find Bradley sexually attractive. But sometimes in life, you just gotta trust me, folks. When done properly, the chopped cheese sandwich really is a thing of beauty, and I highly recommend giving it a try very soon. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Feel free to drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!